All right, Doug, you can start. All right. Uh, this is the uh, Ohio City Design Review Committee for uh, January 20th, 2022, calling to order. Nate, would you call the roll, please? Absolutely. Uh, Doug Wall. Here. Antonia Marinucci. Here. Here. All right. Uh, Alex Frondorf. Here. Margaret Land. Here. Chris Lozier. Here. Great. All right. Our first uh, item on the agenda is the AT&T uh, Slayton Wireless signage at 2027 West 25th. Um, and Tim Kramer, I believe, is on the call. So you can uh, go ahead with your project. OK, so as Nate alluded to, this is for AT&T Slayton Wireless at 2027 West 25th Street. We are proposing a remote wired letter set um, at this location. It would be a two foot six globe and 18 inch AT&T letters. And then also a door vinyl for this location. And the, the doors on this drawing are just representative from another store. Obviously, when we surveyed this, this site um, later in the latter part of last year, the doors weren't in yet. Hmm. Well, it appears to be the uh, former market plaza. <laughs> no longer exists. Hmm. Uh, this is Dan Whalen with uh, Harbor Bay. If you don't mind just going back up one page, I can chime in a little bit from a landlord perspective. Um, so this is for the facade along 25th Street. Um, from our perspective as landlord, what we're requiring is no backer panels, no raceways, nothing like that visible. So all the letters that you see are pin mounted individually for a clean look. That'll be standard across any and all signage that we have on the retail storefronts for the project in total. Um, if you recall, I think one point in time we discussed uh, foregoing a sort of master signage program for the whole project just due to the, um, kind of the nature of, of things that are happening and all the moving parts. So I, I figured it would be a little bit more productive for people to come in and present their stuff individually. So um, this, at least internally from our standpoint, has been reviewed on our end and, and approved uh, versus the, against the aesthetic that we feel is uh, appropriate. And so I just want to give a little context to that. So um, from, from that standpoint, this meets and uh, would probably be pretty typical of things that you would see other retailers bring through um, on our project. Thanks, Dan. Does any uh, of the committee members have any questions? No, and Nate, for the record, I'd I like to note that I am recusing on the first two agenda items, this one and the next one for intro. Okay, thank you, Alex. I'm having a little trouble. Oh, I have a... Go ahead, Doug. I'm having a little trouble figuring out the context of where this is on the building. I know you have the address on that 25th Street. Is it towards the north end or the south end? Or... I mean, is that is that those photos where you photoshop the signage in that the exact location where you're proposing the signage? Yes, that would be the location that the sign will be um, installed at. Correct. Doug, this is along the 25th Street facade, so it's west facing. Um, this is probably about halfway down the block from the Lorraine intersection heading south. Um, Again, I'm, I'm here actually to present the next item on the agenda. I'm just supplementing uh, what's being you know, shown to you by the tenant and, and their sign vendor. But uh, um, the context is that brick area that you see sort of above the storefront there um, runs about two thirds of the way of the building. Uh, so for this retail block on 25th, our intent is to have retailers uh, be in that, uh, use that as their sign band, if you will. Um, the metal panel area that will cover up the orange um vapor uh vapor barrier below that is just probably not large enough not the right scale so we felt like that the brick uh, area here between the upper windows and the first floor 
was the best opportunity for signage. Uh, asked the tenants to center the signage between the pilasters. Um, when they presented it previously, they had it centered over a pilaster, which did not look good. And so um, this is, is sort of in line. There's, yeah, their their storefront um, is kind of in line with that that 20 foot bay there from Orange Column to Orange Column. So this is is pretty much directly above. Uh, where their exterior exposure is going to be. Um, and then anyone adjacent to them would have uh, signage of the same height um, in that in that same brick uh, sort of banding. Okay, so if I understand this correctly, there's only two components to the signage. There's this face mounted sign and then there's some final letters on the entry door, is that correct? That is correct. So it appears that there's a, uh, you know, the, an overhang in front of the stores, you know, much like you have in a typical uh, shopping plaza, like the market plaza there. Uh, so you're not going to have any ceiling mounted signage along there to supplement this. Uh, so you're just going to go on the sign face of the building and on the glass. Is that, is that it? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, they're really there is no overhang i mean there's a small projection of the brick itself and the metal panel below but it's not it's not a true um kind of canopy there so it's probably well, inset it's, you know about six to eight inches from the shadows okay yeah yeah um and i guess of note you know uh we're, we're putting it on the tenants to kind of present their own stuff so it just so happens that i'm on the call today for something different but um <clears throat> what what i can do is uh, the next time a tenant comes through, we can provide uh, larger contextual imagery for the status of the, the overall project. Um, Cause I do agree that these little snapshots aren't the most helpful in terms of presenting how it fits into the larger scheme. Okay. Well, this seems pretty straightforward and uh, looks appropriate to me. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? Um, yeah, I have a, a question or I guess a comment. Um, can you go back up to the, the other um, slide? So the, the, the height of the, the brick portion is three foot one. Uh, the circle of the at t logo is 30 inches, which would leave about three and a half inches above and below the circle. Um, and I know it's, you know, doing a Photoshop uh, on top of a photo like that is hard to maybe get the scale completely accurate, but um, it, the 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 I'm wondering if if looking at that Photoshop that the that the side might be a little bit like a hair maybe too large for the overall scale of the height of that brick piece. Um, so was there is there uh, what what's the uh, the I guess the 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 thinking in terms of the size of this relative to the you know typical sizes that you have and is there a is there a size lower that maybe allows for a little bit more breathing room above and below uh the sign so that the so it doesn't feel like it's 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 crowding the the brick face as much as it it, it appears to in this uh in this image so the, the proposed sign that we have shown is a typical sign um, that is used at various locations. And it is a small sign already, obviously because of the ratio between the globe and AT&T, the AT&T letters are a bit smaller already than the globe. Um, you know, there would be a custom size that we could go down a couple of more inches um, to, to you know, give that a bit more breathing room. But also when AT&T reviews the branding, um, they are very uh, particular on the clear space. So, you know, this does meet their clear space. And I understand what you're saying there. It looks tight up there, but I think there's, you know, the globe is going to be a bit tighter on that sign band, but AT&T gives it more breathing room also. And, you know, it's a small letter set already compared to other locations. So I think we would like to move forward with this size if that's, you know, okay. if that's um, acceptable. What do you mean a small letter? So you mean there's additional characters on some of the more typical signage? 
Can you repeat that? One? Can you repeat that one more time? I guess you said it's a different letter set than a lot of their, a lot of their signs. So I'm just kind of asking, what does that mean? Is that mean no? It's a, no, it's, a here or? it's a smaller letter set than most locations. Uh, most locations, you know, they obviously have a bigger sign band, and you know, they might have a a typical letter set is probably a three foot four globe with a two foot AT and T. Um, that we do at a lot of locations or even larger, you know, depending what, you know, obviously what the city allows and what, uh, what their sign bands look like. I see. So you're, you're just referring there to the overall uh, size of the, of the circle and the, and the text. You're not. Yes, correct. Text. Okay. I see. Well, you know, I, uh, I agree that I don't like the way the, uh, the circle crowds the edges, but it doesn't extend beyond it. And the letter character height is small enough to provide more breathing room. So since the circle is just a circle and it only gets close to being tangent at the outside, it doesn't bother me so much. If letters were, were that, had that kind of, uh, uh, relationship to the edge of the sign band, then I don't think I would like it. But I think, uh, Personally, I think I could live with that with this particular design. Yeah, I, I, I would tend to, to agree with, with Doug as well. Um, I think the only, the only consideration would be um, the precedent moving forward for additional signage uh, as, as sort of tenants uh, provide their, their proposal. Um, and um, I just want to just, I guess, keep that in mind as we continue uh, uh, with the reviews of additional signage moving forward. Um, but I, I agree with Doug, you know, I think it would be, I think it's acceptable as is, um, though I would like to see a little bit more breathing room. Um, and as long as this doesn't set a, a precedent for overcrowding of the signage along that band, uh, uh, moving forward for, for other proposals, um, I, I would be okay with, with um, accepting uh, this as is. Well, I think as long as we've stated that, uh, in the on the record as part of our discussion that if others follow and they say, well, you know, you, you let this sign be so close to the border. We clearly discussed this and said that we uh, we only approve of this because it's the circular shape and it only, you know, that becomes close to the edges, you know, at, at a single point. So uh, I think we've, we've stated our case here. Great. All right, if there's no additional comments or questions, would someone care to make a motion? Um, I'll make a motion, but I have a quick um, question or request to Dan. When you have future applicants, can you just ha have them include like a legend to show us where it is overall on the site? Yes, uh, a site plan or some kind of. Yeah, just to like orient us, just because there's a lot of store frontage on this property, so we want to make sure we know where it is. Be helpful. Um, but otherwise, I would motion to approve as presented. A second. I'll second. Okay, Nate, please call the roll. Okay, so um, do we want to put what uh, Antonia said in the motion, or do we want to approve as presented? And I could take the note down that. Uh, you request that any further uh, retail signage come uh, with a site plan. Well, I think I don't think that pertains to this particular okay. uh, yeah, uh, I item of approval, but I think that's sort of on you, Nate. That when they submit their stuff, you know, you before the meeting, you should let them know that they need to have that as part of the package. Okay. All right. So the motion is to approve as presented. I'll call the roll now. Uh, Doug Wall. Aye. Antonia Marinucci. Aye. Margaret Land. Aye. Chris Lozier. Aye. All right. The motion is approved. So thank you good and good luck. All right. Thank you. So I'll wait for Doug to get back real quick. <laughs> Okay, so our next uh, item on the agenda is uh, the West 25th and Lorraine um, 
intro patio and public park space. So um, Dan, you can take it away. Dan, I don't think we can hear you. But I don't see that you're muted, so. Some other technical issue involved, apparently. Can you take your headphones out? Yeah, sometimes just use your computer. Air, sometimes with the AirPods, it uh, doesn't like it. So, can you dial in? Well, if he's having an issue, do we want to come back to this, take another item while he's trying to resolve this technical issue? Give him a minute here to get back in. Yeah, I think that would be up to the committee and that would be up to you guys. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. All right. I don't know what the what what happened because I'm doing the exact same thing I just was. But anyway, off and running. So um, we're bringing back uh, an isolated portion of our uh, really our site plan here for the first floor and a partial area on the second floor um, that we made amendments to as part of uh, some restaurant design. So um, if we can scroll to the second page. Um, the plan you see on the screen by and large is what was approved outside of the area in red, which um, on the on the next page, it'll kind of show you what was part of our original building permit submittal that that is approved. So we had a concrete uh, sort of walk. We had some floating planter beds and then we had some built in beds that were stuffed full of trees and, and ground cover. So uh, that is currently what we are quote unquote approved to build and then I'll going back to that earlier slide, um, one page up is kind of what I'm bringing through here for um, for approval. So uh, that's the first floor. There's a second floor element that involves a trellis that we'll get to later in, in the, the discussion, but uh, I'll go ahead and scroll. Okay, so here um, here's our current plan for the area. Um, so basically what you see is we're still uh, planning on building perimeter planters um, that would be made of concrete. They would be filled with ground cover and they would get individual trees within them. Um, and then uh, there's cladding that would go on all sides of these planters so that the concrete was then covered up. Uh, the cladding shown on a later page. But um, in addition, the rest of this is floating FF&E. There are a couple fire pits shown. And then kind of the highlight of this area on the first floor in the park space is uh, where the number one is shown. And that's um, an old Airstream trailer that we are hoping to convert into a, an outdoor bar that would be a fully functional bar for our restaurant here. So um, there's photos of, of the one that we purchased uh, before any improvements are made, but I can talk through that a little bit um, as, we, as we go forward. Uh, in addition, uh, at the corner of each of these planter beds where the trees are shown, uh, we will have some steel posts that we have some catenary lighting strung from to kind of go over the top of the tables that are being built in uh, to the to the corners of these planters. So in addition to being clad with wood and filled with trees, uh, we're using the, the planter edge as a, a bench seat that'll kind of form an edge to the patio um, and just make this a little bit more intimate uh, since it's sitting in the larger, you know, 35,000 square foot open space um, outside of uh, the building. So you can continue. We did some just quick 3D uh, views so it kind of shows you the scale of things and, and the trees and the way they sit um, in the beds. Uh, the wall, I'll call it, um, that is sort of shown in like kind of the, the background there uh, is up against the sidewalk. We have an elevation change. And so the, 
the wall that separates the sidewalk at Lorraine Avenue from the interior of the patio uh, is is put up higher because uh, it has to have fall protection. So you just can't have someone you know, tripping into to the lower uh, bowl, if you will. Um, so that comes up about 36 inches, I believe, above the sidewalk level. Has a planter that sits on top that will be sort of uh, strewn with, with some ground plantings and some small shrubbery. Um, there's two planters in the center of the patio that are actually formed with concrete, and then they get a, a wood tabletop that wraps around them so that we can have seating. Um, and then that sort of uh, hunk in the background at, at the moment that doesn't really have much uh, design to it is, is the Airstream trailer uh, massing. So as you scroll down, you'll get a couple different viewpoints of the, the park um, and the patio as it's sort of the scale to the building. Keep going. This would be kind of coming down the steps from Lorraine Avenue into the to the area. Um, so is the entire plaza there, uh, whatever it is, three or four steps down from the sidewalk level? There's different grade changes. So a lot of the plaza is, and, and that's just kind of the natural site grading that we had to deal with. So Lorraine Avenue is actually the high point of the site and kind of the the V shape of the building is the low point. So there's a lot of sloping that happens inside the plaza itself. So you'll have various walk, walking paths that meander and, and actually slope inwards um, to, to get all the grades that, that we needed to hit. Um, but yes, the generally speaking, the Lorraine Avenue sidewalk is is up almost three feet from the lowest point of the interior park. Okay, thank you. So this is a this is a good point to kind of freeze and talk about the uh, change that we also are proposing for the second floor. So um, this is looking back at the eastern wing of the building. All of this is constructed at this point from a from a building standpoint. So um, the portion sort of to the right of what I'll call that opening where you kind of see a, uh, um, a wood slatting going across from the taller piece of the building to the two-story piece of the building. Originally, that was going to be two apartments that were just going to butt up into that um, sort of projected uh, lower two-story piece of the building. We elected to kind of scrap that. And what we're pitching now is putting a, a terrace um, patio for our second floor restaurant in that opening. And so this is essentially a steel trellis that connects from one edge of the building to the other edge of the building. Um, and it's rendered up a little incorrectly here, but essentially it's gonna be four pieces of, uh, of eight inch steel that just go um, horizontally across from the two story portion, uh, tying into to the taller piece of the building. And um, it'll just have string lighting on it and um, you know outdoor heaters and um, some greenery. But, but beyond that, all we really did was was lop off um, what was going to be just another uh, floor there and uh, kept the general massing with some of the steel structure. So uh, the patio is tucked in there between the, the tall portion of the building and the two story portion. Um, it's it's in place now. You know, I, I didn't have any um, pictures to show what the current status of this is, but um, the uh, the idea is that we have that that sort of 20 foot wide opening to serve as a uh, sort of intimate um, second floor terrace for the restaurant on the second floor. This is just a little bit of FF&E presentation for that first floor patio, um, just to kind of get the feel of what's happening out there. Um, the name of the first floor restaurant is Pioneer. Some of that's been out there in Cleveland scene and published through some PR, but um, generally, it's a nature-inspired sort of camping vibe that, that you're going to see. So a lot of the furnishings, um, the tables, the fire pits, all kind of are using rustic materials. Uh, we do have some pops of color with the, the greens and yellows. But um, by and large, a, a lot of it's going to be reclaimed wood, some core 10 for the fire, um, fire bowls themselves. And um, the uh, the Trex, which is a sort of the decking material, I think most people are familiar with, is what's going to be cladding the concrete walls. And scroll down a little bit to the next page, I believe that that is um, shown. So basically, it's it's a wood look panel um, that runs in eight inch wide slats that'll be adhered to the concrete. Um, the finish we're proposing is the sort of lighter brown that's that's boxed in there uh, on the bottom left. And uh, that would clad all the concrete um, sort of jagged planter walls that you see on plan. Uh, the Airstream itself. So 
uh, we found this beautiful 1968 uh, Ambassador trailer uh, in Medina, <clears throat> excuse me, and we, and we bought it. So we have it, it's in the shop right now. It's being modified. Um, largely though, we, we would like to keep the finish sort of in this rustic um, kind of found condition. Um, we will be cleaning up some of the, the details. So the awning, for example, would get a brand new um, green uh, polyester uh, awning that would, that would come out over our ordering window. We're gonna cut a big hole in the side where those two windows are popped in. The blue would go away and be refinished. And then um, the rear of the Airstream would actually become a door so that our staff could access this trailer um, for you know filling beverages and ice and all that kind of stuff. So, but generally we're not gonna polish it. We're gonna clean it up a little bit, um, kind of bring it, bring it into the 21st century, but um, kind of leave a little bit of that found um, nature of what you see on screen. So there's a couple of different shots of this, I believe um, this is one angle, but on the next couple of pages, there's, there's other, um, other pictures. And again, it goes along with the, the nature of the restaurant. What we're trying to be here, um, some other details unrelated to the architecture. It's, it's an all wood fired, very casual spot that um, has 180 seats interior, seats about another 120 on this patio. Uh, we plan on programming our park um, in tandem with, you know, the West Side Market, with Ohio City Incorporated, with some various neighborhood seasonality. Um, as it pertains to doing more things um, that kind of aren't just for residents, but are more for the neighborhood at large. And so this patio is it's kind of just a, a large piece of, of the overall park that we want to do something fun and special with. And so this kind of gives a little example for what the finished condition may resemble. It's just a, a, an inspiration photo, but um, generally captures the idea behind what we're trying to accomplish. You're gonna leave the wheels um, on? So we're gonna take the wheels off and then reapply them just for aesthetic. So it's gonna look like it's sitting on wheels, but uh, the trailer is not gonna be um, It won't be mobile any longer. Uh, no, no. Um, and so this last page here is actually just the structural details from the second floor trellis that I pointed out. So uh, it's essentially just a frame. So each, each of these um, horizontals, there's four of them, and then two um, posts running vertically to support that. Uh, Will, will be the frame of the trellis on the second floor. It'll just be um, steel and it'll be painted to uh, sort of match the, the exterior color of the building. Um, that's everything. So I can answer your questions. I'm sure there are some. And uh, how do you have any extra clarity? Uh, in other words, like the, your, your little inspiration photograph doesn't show any fire sources. Yeah. It's just going to be a place where people can hang out without sitting down and just kind of, uh, you know, mill around? Yeah, so if you go up back to one of the earlier pages, it shows the sort of plan view of the patio area, probably page four or five. Um, yeah, that one. Essentially, um, it's an outdoor bar to serve the patio and it's, you can order at the Airstream, but not necessarily have seating at the Airstream. So you'll kind of notice a lot of the, the tables are built in around the perimeter. We've got obviously free floating tables that we can move around, but uh, generally speaking, this would be kind of a walk up over your drink or your beverage, um, and then kind of go back either to your table or to wherever you're standing. Are you bringing uh, utilities to the, to the uh, Airstream? Yep, uh, so it'll be fully functioning as though it were the same as the interior bar. So it's uh, got plumbing, electrical, and actually some uh, HVAC integrated into it as well. So all that uh, is gonna be run in the slab before we pour the final floor. And uh, we'll come up through the bottom of the airstream from the ceiling below. Well, I have to say I like the uh, I like the concept in general. I like the amount of trees that you're proposing in there. Um, can you tell us have you uh, got this far landscaping to select a tree species? We we have at least uh, we had preliminarily um, we had to place orders with the nursery, but um, we're we're kind of following the script of everything that we've done elsewhere the last time we presented. So stuff that will kind of integrate well. Uh, at the moment, I believe the trees that we spec in, in these planters are um, 
are really uh, beautiful autumn maple trees. So they'll turn a bright shade of red. Um, they will not be, you know, they'll be big, you know, tall canopies at, at some point in the future once they, they fill out um, to be really nice shade trees for, for the perimeter here. And we have some of those scattered in other beds as well. So uh, um, amongst the, the stuff that we're doing throughout the, the patio, or excuse me, the plaza at large, um, it should integrate pretty nicely. Um, I have a question about, um, I, I, I agree, I think this is a really uh, neat concept and can't wait for it to, to open. Uh, I have just a couple of just like clarification questions. So you have the steps coming off of yep. Lorraine. So then the, the accessible means to get to the patio is from the, what's labeled as three, the pedestrian path? Yeah, so, so that three, um, and it might help larger to go actually pan up to the previous page of show center, but scaled out uh, one more. So that, that long walking path that's kind of covered up there where the three was shown um, cuts all the way through the sidewalk. So that does incorporate the slope we needed to get the ADA accessibility, not just to the patio, but into the restaurant as well from, from street level. Gotcha, okay, cool. Um, and then can we go back down to the, the rendered uh, plan? Um, so at the, at the steps, are you anticipating any like, I don't wanna call it like security you know, zone or is, is there gonna be anything that, that either a hostess stand or anything that, you know, prevents people just walking in or like, what's the, what's the anticipated yeah. flow from that, from that side? Yeah. Well, when, when the patio is kind of open in, in warm seasons, I think we would have a host stand to greet you at the streets. Um, I don't know that we'd go full fledged like bouncer, but um, you know, for in terms of checking right. IDs and sort of that thing. <laughs> um, and at this point in time, globally speaking, uh, the park, while it's all privately owned by us, um, we are treating it as a quasi public space. So I think that's gonna be a little bit of a touch and go how we moderate that and how we keep it from, um, you know, just getting getting to be something that it's not intended to be. Um, but as for this right now, we're not anticipating any gates. We're kind of just gonna do it operationally with, uh, with staff and uh, deal with things that way until, you know, there's a reason that, that forces us to do something differently. I, I think you might need something like, for example, a you know low sign in the planter area at the edge of the sidewalk saying the name of the restaurant or something so that it's more obvious that this is associated with a restaurant, not just a public meeting, you know, free for all when the restaurant's not there, then you've got to shuffle people out. So, and yeah, it, yeah, it's, and signage is is kind of going to piggyback this, so that's kind of the next thing that I want to bring through for our specific restaurants. Uh, we have one or two things that are, I'll fall a little bit outside the box and, and hopefully are well received that it might take a little, um, maybe a, a sit down with a couple, you know, whomever ahead of time before bringing it through for formal approval. Um, we're looking at a potential sort of pylon sign, which I don't know how that would be received by the group. But I, again, I think, you know, if you look at the language in the landmarks, it says they encourage uh, creative, creative signage. And if you walk up and down 25th and Lorraine, there, there are all kinds of versatile signs that, that exist in the area. So everything we want to do is going to be first class. It's going to be, you know, beautiful. It might be a little funky, um, but I, I'd like to bring some stuff through. And if not for a full approval, at least for a dialogue uh, in the next meeting, perhaps, so that we can get good direction because we're, we're at the point where um, a lot of stuff lead times, fabrication times, supply chain issues where we got to get get decisions made and get approvals in time to have things fabricated and built. So um, I would probably be submitting something, if not the full approval, for at least the dialogue um, for the next meeting. Good, good, because I think you need some control features, but I like the idea that you don't want to just fence it off with gates and stuff so it looks like, you know, it's this uh, separate private area in an area that's generally encouraged to have the public, you know, want to be yeah. Um, if I may, I have another another sort of I guess question clarification. Um, so the the planters themselves. Uh, so you, you mentioned there's going to be cladding on top of the um, the concrete planters. Um, mm -hmm. Are there? So uh, I guess this is a sort of multi part question. So the first part is, um, are there other concrete planters throughout the rest of the the outdoor space? 
Um, and are, will those get treated similarly or will they be sort of, or differently, or will they be left as concrete planters? Um, and then the second part of that question then is uh, the planters that we're looking at here, are they clad on all sides? Um, so including the, the, uh, the faces on, on the street? They are, and um, as far as the rest of the plaza goes, um, the intent was always to have finished concrete on some of those. So it's a different, it's just a different finish altogether, different concrete mix, a different everything. Um, so these, since the intent was not to have them be finished, the concrete mix is, is actually not finished quality. So we wouldn't want to see it exposed anyway. Uh, so yeah, all, all the perimeter sides, both facing the street, facing that sort of walk where the number three is shown, um, everything would, would be getting that, um, that sort of tracks cladding that you saw in, in the, the warmer wood shape. Um, as for some of the other planters, while they're exposed concrete, they do have uh, timber benches that'll be kind of built into them or um, in some cases on top of them. And a lot of that is, is using uh, either reclaimed wood or uh, leftover mass timber from the building construction, which is kind of a cool feature, right? So, because if you walk around the building, you can't necessarily tell that it's a timber structure. So we wanted to bring some of that mm -hmm. Uh, to the to the outside so that other people could enjoy it and see it and check it out a little bit so there's a mix of materials um and i think all of it for the most part is, is very thoughtful and, and integrates well with one another um, nothing should clash and uh you know generally speaking i think it adds to a, a little bit of the flavor so, so that everything's not feeling like a concrete jungle yep, gotcha um so you mentioned there's there's sort of two different finishes of, of concrete that is being installed depending on kind of where it is and and if it's going to be covered or not um i'm just thinking you know 10 years five years down the road 10 years down the road you know if there's a, a change in the theme of the restaurant or something else happens where you no longer want the, the trek and you remove that um i guess one consideration is you know how, how does that get treated, you know, over the lifetime of the building? And does it make sense for that concrete finish to maybe be the same as the rest and you're covering it in such a way where it can be removed later? And then, you know, it, it, maybe it allows a little bit more uh, flexibility with how that space is used, you know, down the road. I guess the short answer would be that the planters are, are not structural in nature, so they could possibly be removed entirely if, if that were ever the case um, and, you know, knocked down and pulled out completely. Um, and I think it would probably be a fairly expensive endeavor for, you know, if some other user came along in a decade to, to do all that. Um, so I, I, I think it's well received. It's kind of one of those things where obviously our intent is to operate this in perpetuity or as long as humanly possible. Uh, with, you know, otherwise their business plan is kind of not viable. So um, that, I, I think the, the short answer is sort of have to deal with that sort of thing when, when and if it, it arrives. Okay. I think those are all of my, my questions and comments. So thank you. And I, I don't know if this matters for the record, um, but due to the nature of some of these changes structurally in terms of the architecture too, um, Landmarks has told us that uh, they, they would administratively approve these changes if design review felt that they were within the context of the project just because of um, the fact that they're, they're not major. I mean, they're, they're detailed, but they're not incredibly major when you're talking about the scale of the overall. So, um, so we, we would appreciate, you know, uh, a vote uh, in a positive direction just for the timing and sake of, of where we're at and, and construction schedule and, and getting everything uh, complete. So thank you. Okay. Are there any other uh, questions or comments from committee members? Okay. The chair will entertain a motion at this time. Um, I would be happy to make a motion to approve this as presented. Can we get a second? I'll second it. I'll second. Got yeah, two seconds. Great. <laughs> uh, Margaret, would you uh, like to add something about, uh, uh, you know, confirming what Dan has said about coming back to us uh, 
with signage and you know control elements and so forth. Uh, you know they have to come back with signage for the restaurant, but maybe it'd be a good idea to add that to uh, to our motion. Um, okay, so the, we approve this design as presented and, and expect to have them come back with any additional signage. Does our seconder uh, approve that? Yes, I'll re-second it. Okay. Well, Nate, please call the roll. Doug Wall. Aye. Antonia Marinucci. Aye. Margaret Lan. Aye. Chris Lozier. Aye. Okay. Uh, the motion to um, approve is presented with the condition that uh, you come back with signage, which you'd be doing anyways. but. Um, it is approved, so thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Take care. Thanks. Next up, we have um, Ohio City Burrito uh, facade at, I don't have the address on me, but um, Jeff, are you here? Yep. All right, hi, 18, Jeff. Hey, guys. Um, 1844 West 25th. Great, thank you. And I mean, you can go ahead whenever. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, all right, so um, what you see here is um, the storefront as it currently is um, on the left there. Um, and what we proposed um, to tie the new window in um, and make it the storefront look a little more cohesive where um, I had Arkinetics put this together for me. Um, they're an architectural firm uh, down on West 25th. Um, so we had like two renditions that we thought might tie it in better. Um, one is to tie the existing windows that are above the blue aluminum, just to paint the mat to match the um, new window to paint that um, aluminum blue as well. Or um, the opposite kind of deal to tie everything would be to match the current espresso of the window, the new window downstairs to paint the upstairs windows to match that. <clears throat> and just painting the storefront back to its original gray, um, just so everything's a little less busy. We originally wanted it colorful and vibrant, but I think if we went, um, a little more muted, everything could be a little more cohesive, I think. I see Carl Brunges with his hand raised from the Landmark Commission. Yeah, I just have a quick point of order here. I believe we still have an item tabled on whether or not this um, new garage facade door was even approved yet or not from a previous meeting. And I think discussing paint colors and such would be moot at this point until we have a decision from the previous. My recollection is that we asked them to go back and come back with a different plan that went beyond just paint colors and that I don't think this committee was going to approve the garage door in any color. That's exactly right, Alex. So unless anything has changed, um, the changing of the colors, uh, I don't believe going to change our position on this. Okay. <clears throat> Carl, uh, to even discuss this, do we need a motion to uh, untable? By Robert's rules, yes. You would have to take the old one off the table. And do you have that presentation or? I do. I can go back to it if, we, if they decide to. Uh, untable it. I don't know if, well, you would have to untable it either way to either take a motion either to approve or deny. Okay. Committee members, what do you think? Oh, I think, uh, I think we should take a vote on untabling since we never, <laughs> we never gave, uh, took a vote, you know, uh, yay or nay on, on, uh, on the garage door window in the storefront. We, to give them an opportunity to come back with something else. And now they've come back with something that, you know, only addresses it in color, which I think was not uh, in the spirit of what we 
why we were tabling it. So I think we should go back to that original, you know, uh, presentation of the garage door and and uh, move on that one way or the other. So would somebody like to make a motion to untable that issue? I'll move to untable it. I'll that second. Way? Okay. Uh, Doug Wall. Aye. Um, Antonio Marinucci. Aye. Uh, Alex Frondor. Aye. Margaret Land. Aye. Chris Lozier. Aye. Okay, so it is um, officially no longer tabled, so we can go back and discuss that now. Um, Jeff, can you please provide clarity? I mean, was we've asked you several times to um, present us with an alternative or a resolution to the window that you installed. Is this meant to update the window, complement the window, the paint changes? Um, I'm not seeing a solution that's different to the window. So can you just provide clarity on what the intention is with this presentation? Well, we looked at other windows and frankly, there are no other windows that would work as good as the one that, that you see there. Not a, no other windows would match as well. Those, that window matches exactly the upper windows. So it's, you know, everything's cohesive throughout the building. Um, it's the same building material. They're the same dimensions as the two far upper windows. They're both 32 inches by uh, 24 inches. Um, that's just the best window we could find. We looked at a ton of different styles, types. Um, the window needed to open vertically because with the tiny patio there, we can't have a window that swings open because then we can't have a patio. Um, and there's a bar on the inside, on the just inside of that window, so it can't swing in. Um, so for functionality and aesthetics, that was the best. Uh, that was the best option. Well, I understand that's your position, but when you originally presented this to us, like what? So it's age July 2020 we did not approve the window yet it was still installed so i think we right well with with COVID and the cdc and our space being so small we needed ventilation so that's why we moved quickly on it but you knew that we weren't going to approve we, we didn't mm. approve it. i don't know what you're asking i'm saying that you installed a window that wasn't approved at your own risk okay well i'm telling you we could make some changes to make it look just as good if not better as the same exact window ac across the street at town hall and, when and we also have that we also have the same windows that pass design review at our lakewood location okay well your lakewood location and town hall are both not applicable to this property as well each it's a little applicable i'm just giving you some context that it does work <clears throat> and work in some locations but not every location right and like across the street at town hall. we don't want to get into this location Right, also, like across the street at Town Hall in the same neighborhood. You also made those same exact points when you originally presented this in 2020. Huh? You also made those same exact points when you presented this originally, and it still was not approved. Okay. So I can appreciate your. Uh, I, I can appreciate what you're trying to accomplish by bringing those up, but um, it's it's not how this board views the project um we have to take every single property on its own and just because you did it in lakewood or you did someone else did it on a different building across the street does not give you free license to do it without approval okay well i think for a lot of the reasons that i've mentioned i think that i'm asking for your approval today okay well then i will make a motion to not approve as presented okay. I will second that and uh, Nate, for the record, I would uh, ask that our reasons to landmarks be made explicit that this was installed without approval, that we indicated that it would not be approved. We asked for and gave ample time. And I would ask that you put in the record the exact number of weeks we gave. I believe it is several, many months uh, of time and that the applicant still came back with the exact same design, albeit simply changing the colors. Um, and that this is not uh, appropriate for this building per the Secretary of Interior standards. And uh, I think that should cut it. So, okay. with that, I second. 
So the motion is to deny. Uh, Alex, I got that down, so I'll make sure to put that in there. Thank um, you. I'm going to call the roll. Uh, Doug Wall. I vote no. Uh, it's the motion to deny. Oh, then I vote. <laughs> I vote yay. So does that that changes your vote here? Correct. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, Antonio Marinucci. Aye. Uh, Alex Frondorf. Aye. Margaret Land. Aye. Chris Lozier. Aye. Okay. Uh, the motion to deny is approved. So you know your next step if you uh, you know still think you want to pursue this, uh, you can go to Landmarks and see what they say. All right. Thank you. Our next presentation is. Um, oh, uh, May Dugan Center uh, on Bridge Avenue. Is there anybody here for this? Yep. Christy's here from Bylowski. We also have Brandon from Bylowski and Andy from May Dugan is on the call as well. Great. Uh, you can go ahead and present whenever you're ready. Okay. Um, if you just want to start on the next page. So this is for the addition and renovation to the May Dugan Center, which is located on the corner of Bridge and Randall Avenue. Um, we'll start with the site plan here. And there's kind of two major areas that we're upgrading on the site, reworking the entry in the top uh, left corner of the page. And then also um, the new entrance at the front and then expanding the back patio and kind of giving that some new life with some new seating areas. So you'll see that more um, as we move through the plan, but this is just the demo um, site plan so you can get an idea of what's being demolished. I'm gonna go to the next page. So this is showing our new, our new site plan. As you can see, the top north entry has been expanded a little bit and we are also planning to restripe this parking lot. Currently the spaces are very tight so by reworking the entry and restriping to the typical nine foot width, we'll be keeping the same amount of parking spaces, but making the parking lot much more usable. And then this next page here shows the new proposed landscape plan. Um, around the front entry, there will be some new landscaping, low plantings to kind of highlight that entry space, and you'll be able to see a little bit better later in the renderings. And then at uh, the bottom of the page, around the new patio, there will be some new trees to shield that, and then just reworking some of the older planting beds that need upgrading a little bit as well. And then here's just an example of the plant palette. Um, there is a lot of shade on this site, so the landscape architect was careful to select plantings that would be okay with the shade and to bloom throughout different times of the year. So you want to go to the next one. Um, that just kind of shows the overall planting schedule and, and how that will work with the different blooming. We have a couple of plan views here. I'll quickly go over and just highlight the areas that are really going to act affect the exterior of the building. Um, up on the top of the page between column line 6A and 7 is where we're demolishing that front portion to add the new addition and create the new entryway to really help give this building a lot more street presence than it currently has. And if you wanna to go to the second floor, on this floor, you can also see, see between those two column lines where it will be demolished on the upper floor as well. So it's a new kind of two-story space that's creating this entry at the front. On the back, directly down on the page at column line 6A is where we're also proposing to cut in a new dormer window to really bring light to that um, second floor space at the new addition. And then also you'll see we are replacing all of the windows in the existing building, um, in the May Dugan space and in the other tenant spaces. So that's reflected as well on these demolition plans. And then this is the first floor proposed plan for the May Dugan space. So you can start to see that new vestibule up the front, the entry that we're creating 
Um, and then there's a couple other exterior changes. We are adding a new door on the bottom left side of the page to really help them with their programming for their food distribution. So this will create a better flow throughout the building. So we'll, we'll point that out when we get to the elevations as well. And then here's the second story where you can see the new community room up at the top in the dark blue color and the new dormer window that we're proposing directly adjacent to that community room space. So here's just a few existing photos for context. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention was that we are moving forward with replacing the existing standing seam roof. So you can see it's kind of damaged and um, not all a consistent color anymore. So we are going to be replacing that as well. The brick is uh, has been tuck pointed and cleaned as part of phase one of this project. So that is complete. Um, that top right photo is the current front entry. So as you can see, there's not really um, a good sense of entry or a lot of signage here for people that are driving down the street. So that's our main goal here with this addition. And then the bottom left, uh, right photo is where the new dormer will be in the back. And we thought it was important to bring uh, some emphasis to that as well, because most people that park at the building are coming in this back entry. So that is the bottom right photo. So on this first elevation page, um, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see, but on the bottom elevation, that's where we are our showing our new entry, um, the two-story. Yeah, so between 6.2 and 6A, there is our new two-story addition. And then um, we're also gonna be going into a little bit of detail about the window. So, on the three-story portion there where the section cut um, two is, is where we'll be taking a look at that facade a little bit later in the presentation. You can go to the next page and then this will be the back of the building. So this is where you can see the new dormer at column line six one. And two other things to point out, the one door I mentioned that we're adding is at column line three on the south elevation. So we're keeping the existing windows as is, and then just adding the door in the last kind of um, section of that window. And then we are filling in one door on between eight and eight A on the right side of that page. It's currently um, an entry into that back section, but we're adding a new therapy room in that space. So that'll just be closed in, no longer a door. The brick will be to match existing. So here's that typical three-story bay that I mentioned uh, when we were looking at the elevation. So we just wanted to focus on this because it identifies most of the window conditions that occur throughout the building. So there are um, the top two floors have sliding windows and those will be staying the same uh, type of window with the slider in the middle. These are um, just commercial type windows that were installed in the building. Originally, so we're trying to keep similar type of window, similar type of profile to keep the look as uh, consistent as possible. The one change that you will see on the first floor is that currently all four of the bottom hoppers are operable and we're proposing just to have the two in the middle as operable. Um, they're not currently all used, so we're kind of trying to condense that down and just do two operable in the middle. So the look will be consistent, but only to operate. So on this page, you can see the profile for the hopper windows. And it's very similar to the existing. It's a little bit smaller. Instead of a three inch spacing, it will be a two and a quarter inch mullion, um, but with a, a similar look with the band in the middle and then the, the horizontals. Um, the stone sills on the exterior are going to remain as is. We will be needing to replace the interior. Uh, they're just like a laminate sill right now. So we're going to replace those with new all the way up, but we're maintaining the exterior stone sills. Then the next page shows the sliding windows and this one, the profiles are almost identical. So we have able to achieve a very, very similar look and spacing for this one. 
And next we have a few slides about the exterior materials. So as I mentioned before, the brick is all staying the same. It's been tuck pointed and clean. All of the windows in the existing portion of the building will be replaced with that mineral brown, um, typical throughout. The new addition area will be a new storefront in dark bronze, and that's contained to that kind of um, two-story addition and then the dormer on the back. We are using a high pressure lam laminate wood look panel on the addition, which you'll see in a minute in the um, elevations. And then we're using a musket gray throughout for the ACM panels and then for the replacement of the standing seam roof. So that will be typical um, throughout for the metal and the standing seam roof has a very similar profile and spacing to what is there now. So it will be kind of replacing kind. So we have the other elevations here, but same thing, kind of pointing out the, the different materiality. This side is all the mineral brown, typical window replacements, standing seam. Just kind of flip through these if you want. Um, and there are some existing stone copings on each of those brick kind of vertical legs that come out and those are remaining as is and they have been caulked and cleaned up. So those will stay. And there's the last side elevation there. There is one large window that goes up that stairwell and that will be replaced with the same window system um, that is for all of the other existing exterior windows as well. Okay, so here's our rendering of the front. As you can see that um, old vestibule has been taken out and we're providing this new kind of two-story beacon, which provides much more of a sense of entry when you're driving down the street, um, really welcoming people into the building. And um, you can see here we have two uh, new pieces of signage, which we'll show you a little bit farther in the presentation. There's the signage at the entry of the building on the pedestrian level, and then a new monument sign kind of further out. And um, I'll show you those a little bit more in detail as we move on. And then here's a rendering of the backside of the building with the new dormer that's proposed above the uh, entry on the back. And then you can see we've kind of reworked that patio area a little bit as well to provide some more trees along the edge and some additional kind of more private seating areas. So here's a plan showing the different signage. Um, you can see the monument and the entry sign that we talked about. And then we're also proposing a few along the back. So if you're driving down Randall currently, there's no um, signage. So we wanted to add a street, street level sign on the building to kind of help people um, find the site a little bit better. And then once you get into the site and have parked, we're proposing a new directory sign that lists out the other tenants that are in the building as well to help people find their way. So we'll have some elevations of those coming up. So this is the entry that you saw in the front of the building. It will just be a pin mount kind of metal sign. And one thing that May Dugan brought up was currently they don't have the address anywhere uh, very visible. So we wanted to add that here and to the monument sign to help people um, orient themselves and find the building a little bit better. So this would be just a pin mount sign, the dark aluminum to match the other metal that's in the building and would be illuminated from the overhang with directional lighting uh, pointing down at it. And then that's that wood look, uh, high pressure laminate panel that you're seeing in the back. This next sign would be our monument sign. So we have the address here as well. We thought it would be nice as it doubled as a bench because uh, there's not a lot of seating up in that front area currently. And then this would be inter internally illuminated signage and materiality to complement the, the new addition as well. And then this is the directional sign that would be on the back side of the site, listing out the programming that's in the space. And this one would probably be illuminated with landscape lighting, pointing up at that. Again, carrying those same materiality throughout all of this. And then the last one is the uh, street, street level sign where you would see that from Randall. Um, with the Maydugan logo, again, same kind of metal uh, materiality as well. And this one would 
probably be lit from above, um, pointing back at the sign. I think that's the end. Committee members, any questions or comments? Well, I think this is a, you know, the site plan improvements are very good. The one thing I, uh, I apologize if you mentioned it and I missed it was, uh, are you providing any bike racks? Yes, so if you go back to the site plan, there are a few located in the front of the building. Um, they're kind of adjacent to the monument sign across from the sign on Bridge Avenue. So there's a little concrete patio there and there will be bike racks. Okay, good. I think the signage is uh, very good. Uh, one thing about the sign is uh, the little monument sign in the front is you've got, it's nice that you incorporated the bench features that there's a, a vertical sort of like arm return at the, the north end of that sign. and. Is that going to be the full depth of the seat? It looks like it might block, if you're driving down Bridge Avenue, it might block the view of the address numbers, you know, 4115 Bridge Avenue. Sure. Uh, I don't know, but it just occurred to me. I saw the legs sticking up there. I said, oh, I wonder. If that... Yeah, that's a good, um, if you want to go back to that one, we can study kind of how that, that view works. Um, I don't go back down the other way. Yeah, so it yeah, can be thinner as it returns vertically. Yeah, the vertical leg oh, you see oh, on the side, side plug. Like no, not an arm end to it. Okay, I see what yeah. you're doing. Oh, it's it centered to the sun. Mm -hmm. okay. I can say. Well, I think you've done a very nice job with the material selections and, uh, you, know, you know, respecting the uh, original design of the building while adding some very uh, useful and elegant features to it. Thank you. I don't have any comments. I think it's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I think this is a, a drastic improvement, um, but still being um, complementary to the uh, the fact that this is a you know over 50 year old building um, and it's technically historic, um, I think uh, I, I would I would also agree that this is it, it responds well to the uh, to the existing building um, uh, and uh, it provides to, to your point also a, a, a real front door and a, and a presence on on, uh, on bridge. Um, and the rendering is very appropriate for uh, the weather we've been having, which yes. is nice. <laughs> um, I do have one question. So um, the color of the standing seam metal roof, does that, is that meant to match the existing or was there, is, or is there a change uh, in, in color from what's there now to what, what's being proposed? It's a slightly softer color, I would say, um, but it's pretty similar in tone to what's there now. And that and it, and and it's the, the existing is slightly different from the tone of the of the windows themselves as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And then as we're looking at this this rendering, so um, is the intent that the that the wood look exterior piece flows then into the the interior? Yep, and I'm assuming yeah. the interior is is real wood, or is it the same material as what's being used outside? Yeah, so it's the same um, by high pressure laminate panel that will flow kind of all the way from the exterior through the interior. It continues on the ceiling of this new community room, so it's kind of creating this box like that flows all the way back, um, almost to the middle of where that dormer space happens. So it's really connecting the front and bringing you through those two entryways. That's your, that's your nice. Um, and then uh, are, what's the, are, is this sort of concealed fasteners or are there exposed fasteners? For the, the, wood, the wood, they're concealed. Yeah, okay.
No, I think this, I think this is, this is really nice. Thank you. Any other committee members like to comment or do we want to make a motion? Yeah, no, I, I guess I have one more. Oh, sorry, I have one more one more question. Um, so the 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 uh, um, the monumental sign uh, is that internally lit or is that or is the, or is that externally lit? That one we were thinking would be internally illuminated. Um, and then I guess the question that I would have is the the building sign that goes on sort of the the faces or that that you're able to view from Randall. Right now you're showing that um, lit from above. Um, was there any thought to having that be internally illuminated as well, or or was it just the determination that it would be lit from from uh, another element from above? Yeah, so there's actually an existing wall sconce um, or floodlight that's located where the signage is proposed on the building. So we thought we would make use of the existing electrical and provide more of a directional sign on that, uh, or at least light that rakes the sign rather than internally illuminate. Um, I think this is a secondary sign um, with respect to the building. So I think this one not being internally lit felt more appropriate to how we're addressing the directional signage also at the rear of the building. Gotcha, and, and I think also, if I can also sort of infer that the, the, that the light above will also help to illuminate um, below, uh, you know, the, the, the site or whatever is below, so, okay. Correct, yeah. It. Yeah, and it's it's downward facing light, so it's, it's not like a floodlight per se, it's just a, a linear that's faced 90 degree directionally down. Gotcha, gotcha. Cool. Any other comments or questions? If not, would somebody like to make a motion? I'll move to approve. Okay, do we have a second? Uh, I'll second. All right. Please call the roll, Nate. Uh, Doug Wall. <coughs> Aye. Uh, Antonio Marinucci. Aye. Alex Frondorf. Aye. Margaret Land. Aye. And Chris Lozier. Aye. Uh, the motion to approve as presented is approved. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our last project today is Antonia's. Um, and I'm wondering if we're going to lose quorum because we would only have. Uh, no, actually, no, we'd be good. Never mind. Okay. So, um, the last project is 1466 West 29th, uh, the new construction. I believe we reviewed this conceptually before. Yes, we have. I'll um, turn my camera on so you guys can see my very tired, pregnant face. <laughs> um, okay, so yes, we're back for final approval for 1466 West 29th. Um, it's a, a single family home um, located right south of the transformer station. The lot is currently owned by um, Laura Bidwell, and she will be using this residence <clears throat> as just her private retreat space. Um, so it will um, not for like a rental purpose or anything like that, just for herself. So this is the site history. I think most of us are familiar. I don't know, Chris, that you saw the concept or the earlier plans, but um, there was a house there that burnt down in about 2012. So um, currently it's in its little you can go to the next slide, Nate. Current context, again, that I'm sure we're all familiar with. Um, scroll down. It's currently in a little parklet um, formation um, that you see here on that lower photo with the VW bug in the front. Okay, next slide. 
Um, Landmarks Commission had asked um, a couple specific questions when we saw them for concept schematic review, um, including like um, showing a bit more of the existing plantings. So um, you can see that in the existing site plan, I've added the maple and birch trees that are existing on the site. Um, then there's a diagram of setbacks. Scroll down, please. And then in the proposed plan, we are anticipating that we'll lose four of the maples. Um, the birches that line the back end of the property will remain, um, as well as the street trees that are not um, on this property, but there's some pretty well-developed ash, I think they're ash trees, um, flanking both ends of the parcel. And it's um, gonna be a two bed, one bath, 1365 square foot. Um, the in anticipated variance that we have here is that there's not off-street parking. Um, we didn't, Ward didn't want to um, create a curb cut, so we are opting to not have parking on site. Um, Black Club voted in favor of this project. I think there was one person in opposition, um, but so we are hoping that we'll have, you know, community and OCI support for that variance um, for VZA. Okay, go down. So here is a context rendering. The multifamily home to the south face fronts Bridge Avenue, or I'm sorry, Clinton. And then the transformer station, of course, fronts Rust 29. So the property is a little bit unique in that there's not an immediate um, like residential context. So we're obviously drawing from the kind of workmen's cottages that are along church. Um, just around the corner. Um, scroll down, please. So a closer look at some of the elevations, um, very similar to what you guys have seen in the past. Um, Landmarks asked to play a little bit more with the top window proportions um, and spacing. Um, and this is kind of where we landed, meeting the proportions of the lower windows a little more closely. I just wanted to see a little bit more balance up there. Um, and I think otherwise it's pretty consistent with what you've seen. We played a little bit on that south elevation um, with the coupling or spacing of the windows in the bedroom and the living room, but this is where we've landed um, for that. Next slide, please. And I'm including plans just for, for reference as to what we're um, doing on the inside. Uh, another comment from Landmarks that was not really in their purview, but was a good one, was to ensure that the studio loft space um, on the second floor would qualify as a bedroom, which it does. So the windows meet egress. Next slide. Um, a couple minor, really the only minor change I think that you guys have not seen is that um, Laura wanted to opt for a zinc roof that might patina over time um, in lieu of an aluminum standing seam and do a zinc standing seam. Um, we added, she wanted a really modest jelly jar lantern light at that front door. Um, and the door she's anticipating salvaging from Rebuilders Exchange um, over on St. Clair. She does not have one picked out yet, um, but it will be like an oak. She's looking for an oak um, front door that would be complement the, the house style. Um, I think otherwise it's the same as what we presented last time, at Timber Tech tongue and groove porch. Um, she decided she wanted to do wood cladding over a hardy board. Um, all the porch elements will also be in wood. So the whole house will be wood, um, wood constructed. And um, she's also, will have the aluminum clad wood windows in the bronze color. Okay, next slide. I think that's it. Or is that the end? Oh, yep. that's it. Any comments? I, I think these changes are all very, very nice. I really like the materiality, uh, the going with the wood. I think the zinc will be interesting. Um, just two questions, and they're my two standard questions. The, the muttons, their exterior to the glass. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. And then the porch railing height, is that the modern code or is that the historic height? Um, that's a good question. I want to say it's 28 inches because that's my always my default. Um, I can confirm that for you if you'd like me to. If you give me a second to open the drawing. 
It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't look like it's above grade enough to even require a railing. It actually, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't even need one um, by code. It's only. So you go with the historic height? Yeah, I think we're at 18 inches above grade. Okay. Real quick here. Those are my only comments. Thank you. Yeah, it's at um, two feet, eight inches, the top of the rail. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So I guess, what does that make it, 32? 26. No, I, I have no comments. I think it looks nice. Um, I think it fits well within the context of this part of the neighborhood. Um. <laughs> Thanks. Um, also, I should add that we are planning to come back with um, a front paving material, sidewalk paving, uh, as well as a um, an aluminum fence at that front. So we're going to come back with both of those items. Um, we just have not landed on what we wanna do with it yet. But we'd like to move forward with permitting for the house and getting on that BZA agenda. I guess I do have a couple of, of follow-up questions, Mia. Um, the, is, there's an, is there an existing fence there now and will that remain or will you be replacing that the fence? The existing fence that is on the south end, of, there's only one on the south end of the property, um, which is kind of Got like it. the corrugated metal almost. Um, mm -hmm. Current plans are not to disturb that. Um, okay. The neighbor also to the south has like a kind of hodgepodge sort of situation. I think it's mostly historic wrought iron. But there might be a little chain link mixed in. That's not, um, it's on our fence. So she won't be modifying gotcha. those either. Um, we don't anticipate in fully enclosing the front. It's more of just a like perimeter kind of idea gotcha. so far. Yes, I think it's uh, all uh, good design, well proportioned, uh, good color selection. So I uh, have no objection. Anybody like to put forth a motion if there's no further comments? I'll move to approve as presented. Second. I'll second. Okay. Um, so the motion is to approve as presented. Uh, and Antonia said that they will come back with sidewalk paving and aluminum fencing, which I will note in the uh, COA. So I'm going to call the roll. Uh, Doug Wall. Aye. Um, Alex Frondorf. Aye. Margaret Lamb. Aye. And Chris Lozier. Aye. Okay, it is approved. Thank you. What? Thank you. Aye. Um, Doug, I think we can uh, end the meeting now. It's that was our last uh, agenda. Conclusion of our agenda. Yes, we will uh, call this meeting concluded of the Ohio City Design Group. Thank you, everyone.